North Carolina's history is a storied one, stories of courage. Abraham Galloway was recruited by Union generals who gets involved in clandestine activities. You don't know how much history you really are making. Stories of freedom. He participated in the Revolutionary War. Stories of great talent and creativity. We're sharing the state's rich African-American history. It really is a story that in many ways is the quintessential American story. Ernie Barnes, an American story. The music he heard, the movements he saw, and the exuberant spirit he witnessed in Durham, North Carolina, became the art Ernie Barnes created. It all comes back to Durham. It all comes back to the impressions that he had here. He really was shaped by those experiences, um, and, and it comes out in these, uh, in these art forms, these figures that became larger than life. Those larger-than-life figures came from Ernie Barnes' own life growing up in Durham when tobacco and Jim Crow reigned. He was born in the Bull City on July 15, 1938. Luce Rodriguez, a state trustee of the Ernie Barnes estate, describes how early influences shaped the artist and his work, including the Sugar Shack, Barnes' most recognizable painting. The Sugar Shack was actually inspired by a dance at the Armory in downtown Durham. In 1952, when Ernie was 13 years old, he snuck into the Armory and saw people dancing like that. He painted it in the early 1970s, and the Sugar Shack was featured on the show Good Times, and it was also a Marvin Gaye album cover. Fueling imagery in the teenage barns, the Durham Armory drew notable acts for Durham's African-American community. Clyde McFadder, Bo Diddley, Chubby Checker, and Duke Ellington played the Durham Armory in the 1950s. It was a time when Jim Crow laws in North Carolina and throughout the South prevented those African-American musicians from using the same hotels, restaurants, or other facilities used by whites. Barnes' work demonstrates how his community, struggling against the oppression of legalized segregation, found ways to celebrate life. They gathered and rejoiced in various ways, worshiping in church, socializing on the porch. He was able to um, create a, a new way for people to view the African-American experience. Um, and he gave that in a very rich and very powerful way. Playing basketball with the makeshift basket. Using this imagery, using these figures. That's all shaped by, you know, growing up um, in the Jim Crow South, um, attending um, old black hillside high school, coming to then North Carolina College at Durham. The distinct characteristics of African-American high school and HBCU marching bands found their way into his work. Uh, homecoming is of a marching band, and for those familiar with Durham, it's the intersection called 15501 at Roxborough and Pettigrew. Ernie said that's where Hillside High School marching band would turn the corner from the segregated downtown area and into the black area. And the band would, how do you say, kick it up a notch, painting the drum major, one of Ernie's favorites. He loved drum majors, the marching band and, you know, a drum line. For the painting, he made many studies of the drum major to get that final painting just right. Art was his, um, his main major. Uh, and I will note also he was on a full academic scholarship, by the way, uh, and played football here uh, under the great... Um, Coach Riddick. While developing his signature artistic style, Barnes also became a football standout, making it to the NFL. He was an offensive lineman for five seasons with the San Diego Chargers and the Denver Broncos. And that's who he was, you know, a creative figure who transitioned well from um, football, yet art was where he found a home. Barnes' art displays the very spirit of his neighbors and resilience of his community. It was spirit-filled in terms of his work. Happy times, because, you know, if you understood um, the 50s and 60s, these were challenging times, and, and yet here he's able to evoke a different experience, uh, offer a glimpse into the world in which those who lived there, that they saw. Very much the embodiment of um, the state of North Carolina, um, those who uh, have come through challenging time, but yet remain strong and fervent and share those experiences that they've had. Um, with others, and that's what he's done, left a, a wonderful and indelible legacy. His legacy paints 
the power of one. Reminding people of, of the greatness of one to be able to harness the real experiences of African Americans and to share that with a larger purpose. Which Luce Rodriguez says should make Barnes' hometown proud. When you hear Durham in North Carolina, I hope people think of Ernie Barnes, how important he is to American culture. <laughs>